What's up, YouTube? Today, we are going to talk about research. I get a lot of questions about research and my thoughts on research and if research is necessary to land a competitive specialty like interventional radiology, for instance. So on today's video, I figured I'd touch on research and give you guys four tips or four reasons why I think research is a good idea. Let's get into it. All right, so let's first dive into the charting outcomes in the MATCH, U.S. Allopathic Seniors National Resident Matching Program. This is data from 2018. This is the most recent data we have on the residency match. So let's go to chart eight, which is the mean number of research experiences of U.S. Allopathic Seniors, and the next chart, which is abstracts, presentations, and publications of U.S. Allopathic Seniors. All right, so this is chart number eight. This is the mean number of research experiences for med students going into residency. So the blue is matched and the green is unmatched. And as you can see here, most people who matched, especially in some of the competitive specialties, had research or research experiences. So for instance, dermatology, almost all of them who matched had at least five research experiences. And there were also a lot of unmatched who also had research experiences which goes to show how important it is to have research in these fields. Also, if you take a look at interventional radiology, which was the most competitive field in the match last year and the 2018 match, you have 4.4 research experiences for those med students and the unmatched rate had about 3.8 research experiences. And then compare that with the diagnostic radiology, which was 3.7 and 3.2 respectively. So now if we go to the next chart, this shows, basically breaks down the mean number of abstracts, presentations, and publications of all the med students who matched. Again, let's look at interventional radiology, which was the most competitive field in the match during this year and last year. So here we have a mean number of abstracts, presentations, and publications of 8.4 for IR, and people who did not match had a mean of 7.3. So diagnostic radiology had 6.0 average number of abstracts, presentations, and publications versus the unmatched of four, just below four. Dermatology, which is another very competitive field, notoriously competitive, had 14.7 number of abstracts, presentations, and publications. So you can see here that all this stuff is extremely important, especially if you're matching into a very competitive field, such as dermatology, interventional radiology, diagnostic radiology, plastic surgery, orthopedic surgery, all those kind of fields. So for those of you who don't have access to this data, it's simple public data that's found on the internet. I'll put a link in my description below just so you guys can check it out. It's actually very good when you're applying for residencies. So I was actually on the lower end of this chart, even though I still matched. So I think I had like three, maybe three publications. One was like a presentation, one was a, or two were, I think case presentations in a journal. And I was on some research I think as well. I can't even remember at this point, but I still matched. So research isn't everything on your application, but it definitely helps. And it doesn't look bad if you don't have research, but it definitely looks way better if you do have research, if that makes any sense at all. Now, one thing I haven't mentioned here about having research on your application is that it's an excellent talking point during an interview, especially if you are somebody who isn't really good at carrying on small conversations or small talk. It's good to be able to discuss your research and even more so, the interviewer can actually ask you questions about your research and kind of facilitate that conversation and keep it going. Going along with that topic is you better know your research. If you did eight research presentations or whatnot, you better know all of them cold because the interviewer will ask you about them and you are expected to know about them. Otherwise, it makes you look even worse during the interview. So the second reason you should do research is because it builds connections. It affords you connections with colleagues and mentors. 
that you may not have had access to if you didn't do research. My own personal experience is whenever I had a paper or an idea to have published, I would approach one of my attendings and talk to them about the topic. We would have multiple meetings about how we would go about presenting this topic and what journal to try to target. You'll end up spending a lot of time with your mentor and getting to know them very well, which comes into play later on when you're trying to get in the residency. Say for instance, that same attending who you worked with on your research project knows you very well and will have you in mind when they're going through applications for residency, unless you're like not good to work with or something. Going further with this topic, when you are going to these places to present your research, you get to know a lot of different people in your field. For example, at interventional radiology conferences like the Society of Interventional Radiology meeting, which is in a different location every year, a ton of different private practice and academic IR people go there and it's at these conferences where you get to mingle and meet other people in your field and develop those connections over time. And the more conferences you go to, you start seeing these people more and more and you become closely connected and a lot of times you end up becoming friends with a lot of people in the same field. So the third reason you should do research is because you have the opportunity to do something novel and put your name in front of it. The reason we got into medicine in the first place is to make a difference in people's lives and there's arguably no better way to do that than create your own research and have that research come to light. We have the ability to come up with new and innovative ideas that can change the face of medicine and change the way we practice medicine. That's the beauty of research. Medicine is still a relatively new field and there is still so much to discover. The fourth reason you should do research is because you get to go to cool places. Like I said before, the Society of Interventional Radiology is in a different location every single year. I've been to the conference in Atlanta and I will hopefully be going to the one in Seattle this coming year in 2020. And this is not the only conference that changes every single year. Some of the larger conferences tend to do this. And let's not forget, there are a ton of different conferences in Europe and Asia as well, and you will get many, many emails about them. My program gives us a total of four days off for conferences, but the catch is you have to be a first author on some sort of research in order to be able to take these days off. And yes, they do pay for all the travel and hotel expenses while you're there and give you a stipend for food. So it actually works out. I mean. If I wanted to, I could go to, say, Barcelona for a four or five day trip and have almost all my expenses paid for and get to experience a cool city and also meet other colleagues from across the globe. So that concludes my four reasons why I think you should do research. I'm gonna leave you guys with a question because I'm going to start doing a question at the end of every video I do because I get a ton of questions in my DMs and on YouTube daily. So I figured I'd at least address one per video and then I'll eventually get to a Q&A video further down the road. All right, so the first question is via Instagram. And if you don't follow me on Instagram, check me out right here. So this is, hey Dr. Lini, I've been wondering what your workout eating routine is like. I worry that I'll be too stressed to find time to work out if I get accepted into med school. I just wanna know how you stayed active and healthy, thanks. So staying healthy in med school is super tough because you are constantly hitting the books, but you have to stay very regimented and on top of everything because there are some days where you won't be able to work out. And in those days, you have to make sure you're always eating healthy. If you maintain a healthy diet, you can kind of go a few days without working out and still be fine. But you also need to make sure you hit the gym a few times every week, eat right the whole time in the process and try not to slip up many times unless you're like celebrating after a hard test or something. And that concludes this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. As always, make sure you smash that like and subscribe button and follow me on Instagram if you don't already. If you have a question, leave it in the comments below and I will try to get to it and answer it whenever I can. Otherwise, I'll see you guys on the next video.